When recently asked to give young women a few words to hold on to as they were navigating their own journey in the sports world, Swin Cash, a groundbreaking executive in the New Orleans Pelicans front office, suggested authentic, confident, and unapologetic. In doing so, she capsulized her own brilliant basketball career. Swin Cash has always remained true to herself. She competed at the game's highest levels with supreme confidence in her spectacular skill set. She is one of the greatest champions in the history of basketball. Swin Cash broke onto the national scene as an All-America forward at the University of Connecticut. She helped lead the Huskies to two NCAA titles, including capping an undefeated season in 2002 when she collected final four most outstanding player honors. Swin is the most determined person I've ever been around. There was just no quit in Swin. Whatever she wanted to get done was gonna get done. The second overall pick in the WNBA draft, Cash played an integral role as a rookie on the Detroit Shock's first championship team in 2003. From worst to first to the championship, they are champs. After another title win with the Shock three seasons later, Swin moved on to the Seattle Storm, where in 2010, she was part of yet another WNBA championship team. It's the athleticism, uh, it's the grit, the tenacity, just an all-around player that came in eager to leave her stamp on the game. As a player, Cash could do everything on the court. She was a prolific scorer and rebounder, as well as a lockdown defender. Swin has won everywhere she's gone at every level, and she always found ways to impact the game. Nice. Very good. Good deal. A two-time All-Star Game MVP, Cash was also a winner on the international stage, helping the United States capture two Olympic gold medals. Swin just had the will and the want to and the desire to be great at everything that she did. She knows what it takes to have the best culture possible uh, for winning. She's done a lot to make other people better. Welcoming Swin to the Hall of Fame is a fearsome fivesome with the credentials to back it up. Tamika Ketchings, Teresa Weatherspoon, Tina Thompson, Isaiah Thomas, and Gino Ariema. Please welcome Swin Cash. Most high be the praise and glory to my ancestors forever. I adore thee. Thank you to Jerry Colangelo, to Nene Smith Basketball Hall of Fame, to the selection committee, to Isaiah, Gino, Spoon, Ketch, and Tina presenting me today. And congrats to my 2022 class members. As a young girl growing up in McKeesport, PA, I fell in love with the game of basketball because of my family. See, if you know me, then you know I come from a really big family. My mom, Cynthia Cash, is one of 12. I had 75 first cousins, and that was the count back in the early 2000s. <laughs> True story. Uh, growing up in the Harrison Village projects not only molded me as a player, but also into the woman I am today. We didn't always have it all as a family, but I watched my mom, stepdad, aunts, uncles, family friends, people in the community, even guys on our street corner, do the best with what they had. See, you all, or Yince, as we like to say in Western PA, Coach Carr know what I'm talking about there. You may look at me and see a polished woman in front of you today, but I promise you, I'm the product of God's grace, prayer, hard work, mental toughness, and that was formed by watching my mom daily. It was formed It also was formed by watching my five foot one high school basketball coach, 
that had the nickname Putin Grayson, that was a legendary running back, and that he brought out that grit and that fight to our girls' basketball team. He helped me build my foundation of, the, of playing this game with a grit and a fire and a relentlessness mentality to never get outworked. Today, my high school coach is here and some of my former teammates and the current McKeesport Lady Tigers girls basketball team. Salute. I see you, ladies. And also representing the state of Pennsylvania, PA Senator Jim Brewster. Thank you for being here. Also, a special thank you to my Pat Bob Gallagher that couldn't be here today. Thank you for showing me that kindness and genuine love look like from the very moment we met each other. You always said, number 32 on the floor, number one in our hearts. I love you, Paps. One of the best decisions I made was attending the University of Connecticut with Tamika Williams. Oh, blee blue, I see y'all in here. With Tamika Williams, now Tamika Jetter, Asia Jones, and Sue Bird. There's not much that I can tell you three that I haven't personally already said to you. But what I will say is this, since I got the stage. I wouldn't have traded our experience in college for anything. We were the wave. We were the culture. And if anyone's debating the greatest college basketball team ever, ask about us. I see you catch. <laughs> It was a beautiful thing to go to three Final Fours to win two national championships, but I learned a lot of life lessons along the way. Coach always wrote on the board, play hard, play smart, have fun. In college, it always felt like we were chasing perfection every practice, every game. It was an unrealistic pursuit, unrealistic pursuit, Coach, <laughs> of a bar that was set so high and it felt like it moved up daily. One of the things I learned was that you're never chasing perfection. You're learning how to form great habits. Thank you to Coach Ariema, to CD, Tanya, Jamel, Sarah Hootie, and my whole UConn family. Thank you. <laughs> Be being drafted by the Detroit Shocked changed my life. I remember on draft night meeting Adam Silver when he was the president of NBAE. Lord knows I'm getting old. Oh. Adam, I always appreciated your kindness and consistency throughout my career. To my NBA and WNBA family, especially Bonnie, Todd, Kathy, Leah, Jimmy, you all know how much I, you mean to me. And I'm sure I'll be getting a lot of mean texts from people that I did not mention, but I love you all. <laughs> to my WNBA, P, WNBPA family and MBPA family, especially Latoya, Krissa, Jane, Tamika, Michelle, thank you all so much. I also want to thank to my agents over the course of my career, the Cowan Group, IMG, and WME. My 15 year, you can give applause, they did a really great job, trust me, y'all. You gotta remember, I was asking them to do stuff that 10 years ago wasn't getting done, and now those new deals, Mike, I know you're trying to get some younger girls. All right. Um, my 15 year career brought me some of the best memories and best times in my life. First, shout out to the Pistons and Shock organization that is well represented tonight. Being coached by Bill Lambeer was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I will say this, I'm probably one of only three people that ever saw Bill Lambeer shed a tear after tearing my ACL in 2004. I know I was devastated at the time, but in that moment, I just want to thank you, Bill, for showing a side of you to me that literally nobody in this room believes exists. <laughs> I appreciate the journey, Bill. To the city of Seattle, the Force 10 Hoops, uh, sorry, the Force 10 Hoops organization, uh, to my OG7 girls, to Chicago Sky, Atlanta Dream, and all of my teammates throughout my career, thank you, thank you so much. Lastly, thank you to the New York Liberty, and no one epitomizes liberty and New York basketball more than Spoon. Salute. <laughs> and to current Liberty CEO, Kia Clark, to Kristen Bernard today, Isaiah Thomas, thank you for investing in us 
and elevating our platform of social responsibility while in the WNBA. I've had unforgettable championship runs, amazing sponsors, shout out to Ray Pond, Aline Hauser, Nike, uh, Nico Harris, and Colleen Wilson. And to my USA basketball family, it's been a blast bringing home a few gold medals with some of my closest friends and women that inspire me, especially these two killers to the side of me, Ketch and Tina. Thank you. A special thanks to my current Pelicans family, to our team governor, Ms. Gail Benson. My family and I truly are grateful for your tremendous support you've shown me throughout this journey to get to the hall. And to David Griffin and Trajan Langdon, as our guys say, you already know, let's keep building. To my family now. Oh, y'all can give it up for the Pelicans. We coming. <laughs> to my family, mom. It's easy to compete in the game of basketball because I watch you fight the ultimate game, the game of life, every day heading to work, breaking barriers, and being an unapologetic black woman, a woman with dignity, grace, humility, grit. I know it wasn't always easy. I'm forever grateful for all you've sacrificed. Thank you, Mom. To my brothers and sisters, dad, step-parents, coaches, teammates, fans, my entire support system from around the world, from the key sport here today, the endless support, thank you. And lastly, to my husband, Steve, thank you for being that anchor for me and for always encouraging and supporting not only me, but also other WNBA players without fanfare. Thanks for seeing the light in me at times when I was real low and couldn't see it for myself. I love you, thank you. And to my two heartbeats, Saint and Sire, one of them sleeping and the other one sleeping in the hotel room. <laughs> we'll run this back when they get a little older. They're only five and one. I love you two more than life itself. You are my why. This world is your playground. And as long as I've got breath, your right to grow, thrive, and ascend will be your dad and I's duty to protect. Take up space, young kings. And before I go, I want to leave you with this. This I know. Playing the game was intoxicating. Competing was like breathing. To love this game, you have to be obsessed with the process of achieving your goals. To love this game, you have to overcome your fear and outwork others' expectations of you. Celebrate your wins, make corrections in your losses, and grind every game like it's your last. This I know. As a black woman, sometimes we have to hold back our confidence out of fear of being labeled intimidating. But as a young black woman, I was taught to straighten my crown, to enter a room with my head held high. Thanks, Mom. Confident in who I was and whose I was, not because I'm a diva or better than, but because it's a statement that I feel worthy of my own skin and my body. Because it's my body. Let me repeat that again. Because it's my body. Because it's my body and I won't be boxed in. And this I know, that this game was a sanctuary from the world that tried to box us in. This game was a vehicle, an outlet to a higher education, exposure to bigger pictures, a platform of more than just performances. Our pulpit is the play playing field. Our podium professed by Ali Gibson and our late OG, the great Bill Russell. This I know, it's not just a game, it's a gift, God-given, not demanding sacrifice, but demanding sacrifice, hard work, dedication, a gift even through the challenges, a gift even through the dark rabbit holes of regret, through setbacks and injuries, a gift of a past generation that struggled to get us here, and now we're here. And this I know. I'm sitting amongst the greatest in this room, humbled to be on this stage, and hopeful for the next generation of ballers with the skill set to take this game to the next level 
and the social responsibility to bring this whole world along with them. Hopefully, hopefully these young girls see pathways I didn't see, pull from the game what I couldn't, and then pour back into the game more than I have. Yet, proud of the dues that have been paid by female athletes patiently waiting for America to pay some damn attention. But in the meantime, this I know. I'm far from perfect. I've made my fair share of mistakes, and I'm sure I'll make some more. But whatever the future holds, I'll embrace the same way I did the game, unapologetically, the way God called me to be. And the whole time I'll know, giving my all was required gift to the game. And the game forever was a gift to me. God bless. Yeah.